Good evening, everyone. Um, we are two minutes away from uh, starting our All Candidates Forum, so please stay tuned. Good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to the All Candidates Forum for the City of Warman. My name is Jamie Malmgren. I am the Executive Director with the Prairie Sky Chamber of Commerce, and I will be moderating uh, the forum this evening. Uh, I want to thank the candidates for participating in this event. Forums like this are really vital to the election process, and I think we can all agree that democracy thrives when everyone is engaged. Um, forums are one of the best ways to prepare for casting your vote by allowing you to ask questions and learn more about uh, each of our candidates. The Chamber's purpose in providing this forum is to facilitate a respectful dialogue between candidates. And so I encourage the candidates to keep this evening about education, about respect, uh, and about communicating to the residents of Warman so that they can make an informed decision. I also want to take a moment to, uh, on behalf of the Prey Sky Chamber, to extend a congratulations to Gary Philipchuk, who was elected as mayor of Warman by acclamation. And I know uh, I was speaking with Gary earlier, and I know he is uh, out in the virtual world watching this evening. So um, we're we're grateful to have Gary part of it. Uh, I'm going to go over the format for this evening, just as a reminder to the candidates, but also so that our viewers can understand how the evening will go. Um, each of our candidates tonight will be uh, allotted a one minute and 30 seconds to introduce themselves. Uh, and opening remarks will be done in alphabetical order. We will then move on to a question period. Um, some of the questions are pre-selected by the Prairie Sky Chamber, uh, as well as um, questions that have been submitted from uh, Warman residents. We are accepting questions for the next hour. Uh, if you want to submit your questions, you can uh, text them to 306-292-7066. And you can also leave them in the chat on Facebook. We do have uh, a couple people moderating that. Um, due to the number of candidates, we have to, we've, we've uh, put them into groups of four. And uh, these groups were simply arranged alphabetically according to their last name. Uh, each group will be asked one question and candidates will have one minute to respond to that question. I will cue each candidate when it is your turn to speak. So please wait until you hear your name called. Uh, and if there are any questions not addressed during the forum, we will email them out to the candidates following the event so that on your own time, you can address them however you choose. Uh, we will be timing. Um, the your your speaking times so when there are 30 se seconds remaining in your allotted time you will see a yellow screen appear like that 
very high tech we are here at the chamber. <laughs> and uh, when your time has expired, you will see my screen turn red or maybe a little pink. Um, and you will be muted at that time. So we just ask you wrap up your sentence and, uh, and let's move on to uh, the next candidate. Um, following the question period, candidates will be given one minute for their closing comments. And this will be done in reverse order from opening remarks. So before we head into the introductions, um, I will just introduce our candidates. If you'd like to give a little wave or a thumbs up when I mention your name. Uh, in group one, we have Richard Beck, Tracy Buchler, Ivan Gabrish, and Glenn Garou. In group two, we have Tracy Johnson, Michelle Mallow, Glenn Murray, and Trevor Peterson. And in group three, we have Doug Ramage, Marshall Seed, Jarrett Toffin, and Kevin Tooley. Perfect. So we will head right in uh, and I will open the floor to our candidates. And it looks like we might be having some technical difficulties here. I'm getting a notification that we are not live on Facebook. So let me give me a couple minutes here. I'm just going to look into things and see what's happening. Okay, so for some reason, um, we are streaming live to YouTube. However, we are not on Facebook Live. Um, we do have quite a few people watching on YouTube. Um, so we are just gonna put a message on our Facebook page and uh, with the link to our YouTube channel. So everyone can go over there and then we can share the YouTube video following um, following the, uh, the forum. Is that okay with everyone? Otherwise I'd have to disconnect and I'd lose everybody on YouTube as well. Sorry about that. So maybe we'll just, uh, if everyone is okay, do you wanna just maybe give it a minute um, and, and give people a chance to go over to YouTube so we have viewers there, that works for everyone?
Okay, I think we are going to uh, to head into our introductions now. Uh, sorry, again, for the technical difficulties. Um, Richard, when you are ready, the floor is yours. Excellent. All right, well, hello everyone. My name is Richard Beck. I am proud, to, I am proud and privileged to serve as Warman City Councilor since 2009. I've lived here in Warman since 2002, and I'm proud to have purchased my first home here. In 2008, I married my wife, Grace, and together we call Warman home. I have served with many local boards and committees beyond the responsibilities of council. I've served regional associations such as Wheatland Regional Library, the Saskatchewan Library Trustees Association, and the Municipalities of Saskatchewan, formerly known as SUMA, and have served as, as their, Northwest, their Northwest Region Director since 2016. During my tenure of 11 years on Warman City Council, I have improved my skills and my education to serve our municipality in the best possible manner. I've completed the Municipal Leadership Development Program as developed by SUMA and SARM for elected representatives. I furthered my studies by completing the local, or the local government authority program with the University of Regina to gain a detailed understanding of municipal administration. Each of these programs have expanded my ability and my knowledge to serve you um, in the best possible manner. I also actively serve within the community with the Warman Community Association and the Warman Sports and Cultural Village Association. I will, I will always continue to listen and investigate concerns on municipal and regional issues. I work diligently to provide the best service for all residents and stakeholders of our community. Thank you very much and I look forward to your questions this evening. Thank you, Richard. Up next, we have Tracy. Hello, thank you, Jamie. Hello everyone out there. And I wanna send out a special thank you to the board of directors of the Prairie Sky Chamber of Commerce. Um, my name is Tracy Buchler. I'm a longtime resident of Warman. I've raised two children in our lovely community. Uh, they are both adults now. I am an artist, a designer, and I am the founder and uh, president of Route 11 Creative Arts Center. This has been a long time dream of mine for Warman to create a strong foothold in the arts and culture and recreation in our, in our community. Um, I have been working diligently to make that a uh, fact. And I hope that I can continue doing that with the support of the citizens of Warman. Um, another very important part to the platform that I'm going to be running on is making sure that the city council is represented by a diverse group of people. Um, thank you for your time and I look forward to answering all your questions. Thank you, Tracy. And I'm looking, oh, here, Ivan, if you can unmute yourself. There you go. Go All ahead. Right. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you to the Chamber of, of Commerce for hosting this forum tonight. When I was asked to run for councillor of the City of the Warman, there were some concerns that were brought forward to me, and I felt that I would focus on these issues as my priorities in this election. I support the construction of a second ice surface at the Legend Centre to accommodate the increasing amount of usage because of a growing population. The upgrading of the city's lagoon system to the new standards of Environment Canada and to improve the sewage discharge to the river by constructing an underground pipeline are needed. I also support maintaining a strong partnership in the PG4 group with member municipalities and planning the future growth of this region. Due to the growth of the city in the north, Centennial Boulevard has become one, if not the busiest streets in the city. This roadway needs to be widened from Central Street to Ron Gidlick Park to improve traffic flow. Presently, Centennial Boulevard narrows from two lanes to one at a crosswalk that is used by students to go to the middle of your school or to the Legend Center. This has created a dangerous situation and a concern for public safety. Another issue is economic diversity. We need to encourage and attract new businesses to come to Warman. With a career in municipal government of over 25 years, and former city manager for nine years. I have the experience and the time to dedicate as counselor and represent the residents of the city of Warman. 
Thank you, Ivan. Glenn, if you can, un there you go. Go ahead. Hello, uh, my name is Glenn Garrow. My family and I have been a part of this great community for the past 17 years. Most of my career has been focused on engaging with customers in a number of customer service client experience roles in both private and higher educational settings. With my experience over the years, I've found communications to be very important within an organization and with our clients. For this, I would like to champion for, oh, I just lost my spot. I would like to champion for and represent the community as I am sure as others have found it frustrating at times for the lack of information being offered to the community via traditional means, meaning paper, radio, or website. Um, sometimes I get tripped up and I am in work with technology at my current position at the University of Saskatchewan. I'm aware there are a number of people within our community that also do not follow elected officials, um, whether on social media or news feeds. Therefore, the message may not always get to everyone. I would like to be the community's voice on council. Um, thank you for your consideration and I look forward to your questions. Thank you, Glenn. Tracy Johnson, go ahead. I am the other Tracy. Tracy Johnson, I've been actually here for eight years now and I just wanna say uh, good luck to my fellow candidates and to uh, Jamie and everyone behind the scenes, thank you for this opportunity to uh, be a part of this. Um, at 20 years old, I uh, opted to amputate my leg. A month later, I was learning how to walk and celebrated my 21st birthday. Two months later, I was back on the university court playing basketball as the first person in Canada to ever play university basketball with a prosthetic leg. This shows some of my determination, my passion and commitment to a goal when I am focused on a goal. My platform is based on one of the four pillars of sustainability that is uh, a part of Warman's strategic plan. And that has to do with uh, social equity. Uh, just like Tracy Beekler had mentioned, uh, we need more diversity. We need inclusion and engagement. My vision is to continue the strength in a female voice, uh, what Cheryl Spence had started. I look forward to sharing more of my story with you, and I want to make sure that we get the right people on the bus. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. We'll move things over to Michelle. Go ahead when you're ready, Michelle. My name is Michelle Mauro. I've been a resident of Warman since 2002. Uh, married 18 years, and I have two teenage boys that grew up here. So in that time, I've seen a lot of growth and I want to keep that momentum going. So on the economic side, we've seen our South End develop for the commercial side. So there's lots of opportunities there. And on the North End, Centennial has come a long way, which is just awesome. So I have some weekends where I never have to leave the city here to get some of my shopping done. So that's important to me to grow that side. Okay, so I want to turn Warman into a shopping stop on the weekends for the local area and encourage bigger stores to build here if possible to add to our current shops. Okay, and encourage a shop first mentality. So for that to grow, to get our, the Warman name out there, we used to have booths at some of the trade shows that were in Prairie Land. That's not going to happen anymore. So we've got to find an alternate way, maybe a booth manned or unmanned at some of the malls and then attract some sit down restaurants so that we can stay here and socialize here. And then for parks and rec, we have lots of activities here. Let's find some ways to add some stuff. I've spoken to people already and they've given me ideas for curling, archery, etc. And then on our park side, add to the parks, maybe, no, okay, I'll have to wrap it up there. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Michelle. Glenn Murray, go ahead. Hello, my name is State Your Name. No, sorry, I'm just kidding. Uh, 
I don't really have anything prepared. Most people know me. My name is Glenn Murray. I've lived in Warman since 2008. I opened a pharmacy here. I've been here since. I am a family man. I am a fiscal conservative. I am, when it comes to safety, education, law and order, I'm probably a little bit further right of center. All my experience is in the private industry. I don't, uh, this will be new for me, but my number one priority is to make sure the tax money given by the residents of Warman is spent responsibly. From there, we'll, I'm more than happy to work with a nice big team to uh, address the things that we need, but we're gonna do it properly. I would like to compare the difference between how things are done in the private sector as opposed to public. Thank you. Thanks, Glenn. Trevor, go ahead. Oh, sorry. You might want to unmute yourself there. Good evening. My name is Trevor Peterson, and I'm asking you to vote to reelect me to Warman City Council. Nicole and I live here with our two children, Alexis and Caleb. I have a public administration degree that I earned at the U of S. Nicole and I are small business owners and have also worked on a wide variety of jobs over the past 34 years, which include working as a letter carrier in a grain elevator, as an economic development officer, as a casino dealer, and many more. All of these experiences from my past eight years on council and in the past gives me some unique perspectives that I believe are an advantage around the council table. I believe that the cities need to do what cities are good at, which are utilities, roads, and sidewalks, recreation, and protection. I believe we need to keep on top of the maintenance of our roads and sidewalks. I believe we need to start the process of building a new public works yard, as both our public works department and our rec departments are crammed into their current spaces. I believe we need to keep the Lagoon project moving forward to take advantage of the $14 million in government grants. I believe that we need to keep lobbying the provincial government for funding to finish the second ice service at the legends. As I would have these move forward, I also want to make sure they are done in a financial, financially responsible manner. Planning ahead, saving and seeking grants when possible in order to minimize the amount we raise taxes. I've argued for eight years that property tax increases should be at inflation or less. And I'm not changing that opinion anytime soon. So November 9th, I ask you to Trevor, you froze up there. Okay, well, we'll, uh, oh, there he is. It was right at the end of your time anyways. <laughs> okay, um, Doug Ramage, go ahead when you're ready, Doug. Thanks very much, Jamie, and thank you to the Chamber of Commerce, and thank you to everyone that's uh, tuning in uh, to, uh, to watch this forum. It's an important part of uh, the election process. My name is Doug Ramage, and I'm asking for your vote for City Council on November 9th. This election is about you, and it's about us. I, I had some prepared remarks, but I did want to take this opportunity to talk, talk directly to you as the residents. In October of last year, I started a business. I decided to make the jump. Perfect planning. Who could have known that COVID-19 and a pandemic was coming right around the corner? As a result of that, I, I understand the uncertainty. I understand the, the decisions that are made around the kitchen table about spending. And I understand the need for fiscal responsibility. My platform is based on growth and affordability. It's based on community safety, and it's based on supporting, working, and growing the local economy and population. I believe I'm best suited for this through my background in engineering, city planning, and my work on the Chamber of Commerce within the Business Response Task Force and my other volunteer opportunities within the city. Thank you very much for tuning in, and I look forward to answering your questions. Thanks, Doug. Marshall, when you're ready. Perfect, thank you, Go Jamie. Um, my name is Marshall Seed. Uh, I've lived in Warman for the past uh, eight and a half years. 
I have three sons, uh, aged uh, seven, nine, and 16. So we're definitely very active in the community, whether it be hockey or uh, a multitude of other recreational activities. For me, simply put, uh, I believe in you know, putting my money where my mouth is. Uh, these are reasons that I've been involved in the community, uh, in the events and the opportunities that I see that are going to benefit not only myself, my family, my kids, but also my neighbours and my community. Uh, this is the reason that uh, I started uh, the Neighbourhood Watch program with the co-founder uh, a number of years ago. It's the same reason that I, I am an active member on the Parks and Recreation Committee. Uh, I also volunteer for the War and Emergency Response Team and I'm very proud to be a team leader for that. Um, there's a multitude of different reasons that I get involved in something, but I can assure everybody that when I do, uh, I'm all in. I want to make sure that we're making our community better. I love it. Quite frankly, I wish I would have moved to Warman many years before I actually did. Um, something with me that people will see is that I am accessible. Uh, I want to hear people's concerns. I've enjoyed hearing people's concerns over the last several weeks. And one thing that I understand is that something that may be a concern or a hot topic to me may not be to somebody else. But because somebody else has another hot topic, it's important to me. Because if it's important to residents, then I think that as a community, um, we need to watch out for each other. We need to help each other. And we do that simply by not talking about it, but by making it happen. So thank you. Thank you, Marshall. We'll move things along. Uh, Jarrett, go ahead. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jared Toffin, a City of Warman Council candidate. A bit of background about me. My wife and I and four children moved here in 2015. Why Warman? Well, we'd always seen Warman from the highway on our many Saskatoon road trips. One day we decided to take a drive through and quickly realized it was the place for us. What do I bring to the table as a counselor? As a supply chain professional for 30 years in many capacities, I understand the importance of getting the best value at the best quality with no rework for goods and services. A tangible asset, asset as we look for the best value for the city of Warman. Volunteer firefighter for 12 years and minor rescue team member. I know the physical and mental demand this plays on a volunteer. Being part of protective services means being on a diverse team with many opinions and aspects. But in the end, we have the same goal, have each other's back and get the job done safely and efficiently, teamwork. As a hockey coach to bring out the best of my players and have them gel as a team, different personalities with different talents and different skill sets. To think outside the box, you'll hear that lots. Evaluating where they should go on the team and to what capacity. To read the game not where we were, but where we want to go. I'm seeking my first term as a counselor running also in 2016. As a city, we're growing in a desperate need of amenities, entertainment, affordable services and main industry employer to keep our residents working in town and our tax dollars local. Other centers have made this happen. Schultz and Engelfeld, Highline and Vonda, much smaller communities accomplish this. I feel as a growing city, we need to be aggressive, especially in these turbulent times and attract business and industry while maintaining a balance, keeping our local businesses Thank successful. You. Thank you, Jared. And last but not least, we have Kevin. Go ahead, Kevin. Good evening. I want to start off by thanking the Prairie Sky Chamber of Commerce, their board of directors, and their executive director, Jamie, for putting together this evening's candidate forum. I've had the pleasure of getting to know many of you over the years. However, there are some of you tuning in this evening that I have not yet met. My name is Kevin Tooley, and I'm asking for your support as I seek to be reelected to a third term as one of your representatives on council. My wife, Danielle, and I have lived in Warman since 2004. We have two teenage daughters, one's at Warman High School, the other at the Warman Community School. In my career away from politics, I work in the field of real estate assessment and evaluation as an assessment manager with the city of Saskatoon. During my time on council, I've demonstrated a commitment to the growth and prosperity of Warman. I've showed dedicated leadership. I've asked difficult questions. I've debated with and challenged both administration and my council colleagues. I've listened to and understood different perspectives from community members and stakeholders. And I've always strived for common sense solutions to the challenges being faced. As a member of council, I've never had an agenda. And I look forward to continuing to encourage investment in services in, in investments in services and amenities and to keeping Warman family friendly and affordable. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. 
So that wraps up our introductions from our candidates. We will now move on into our question period. Um, our first set of questions, uh, our first question uh, will be for group one. And group one, we have uh, Richard Beck, Tracy Bueller, or Buechler, Ivan Gabrish, and Glenn Garrow. Uh, so they'll be answering in, in that order. Uh, the first question is, help us understand what type of leader you want to be by describing your two highest priorities for change for Warman. Could be short-term or long-term. Richard, go ahead. Yes, uh, thank you very much for the question. So, you know, certainly when it comes down to my, my style uh, this year, I, I always look at the issues and, and whatnot, and I always try and look well into advance. I always try and take a 360 degree view as to what's going on and, and what can certainly be applied. When I look at long term things, you know, you know, um, in, in terms of priorities for our community, I look at it in terms of what is the next piece of the puzzle that we need for infrastructure to turn around and achieve growth? So back in 2016, just to backtrack uh, with this here, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the limitations that we had as a community was the water reservoir. So with this here, that commitment was made to turn around and make sure that that wasn't going to, you know, to limit growth going forward. So currently what faces us here in 2020 and beyond is certainly like our lagoon. We, we have failed the LC50 test, um, you know, in terms of our waste uh, a discharge into the South Saskatchewan River. So with this here, quite honestly, that, that's something that is number one on the list and also the arena. Thanks, Richard. Tracy. Hi, yes. Um, I feel in short-term goals that we really do need to create an environment here in Warman that uh, has opportunities for everyone. Uh, we need to create some more programming and uh, allow for the people that are engaged in these recent programs to also grow and develop. Get the word out to our youth, to our seniors, that there are programs that are ready for them to attend and uh, spend time engaging. I know with COVID, it's kind of a difficult thing to gather, but we're coming up with new and inventive ways all the time. Um, through leadership, I am taking that role upon myself to develop that. And uh, yes, it's, it's gonna be a magical time coming up. Thank you. Thanks, Tracy. Ivan, go ahead. I have to unmute. Um, thank you very much for the question. Um, I, I would say that um, my short-term goals uh, right now are to uh, to uh, definitely uh, do some improvements on Centennial Boulevard. Uh, I feel that this project was. Uh, was put on the back burner. It was something that uh, was discussed in previous councils when I was the city manager and, and it was going to be a three year, four year program that was going to be uh, implemented to widen it from Ron Gidler Park to Central Street. And I think that that needs to be done. Another thing that we have to look at is, uh, is our long term goals and the long term goal I see is to make sure that we definitely uh, get the Second ice surface uh, built uh, to uh, accommodate uh, the growing population that we have in Warman. Um, we can't uh, also uh, uh, forget about things like uh, the, the... Ivan, your time is up. Okay. Sorry, one minute goes by fast, I know. <laughs> uh, Glenn, uh, Garrow, your turn. Well, I would like to start with short-term goals, I believe is very achievable, is basically looking at the processes for how we communicate with our community and just see how we can improve those communication channels between a regular citizen like I have been for the last 17 years and maybe with somebody that's more involved with the community. Like, I think there's a bit of an imbalance between the two. 
Uh, long term, I believe um, Ivan and Richard have brought up some interesting points with uh, the safety within our city and our sewage, and those definitely need to be looked at. I know even for the intersection of First Avenue and Main Street uh, sometimes can be a hazardous intersection as well. So focusing on Central or Centennial, I apologize, may not only be the, shouldn't be our only focus. Thank you. Thanks, Glenn. Um, our next question is for group two. In this group, we have Tracy Johnson, Michelle, Glenn Murray, and Trevor. Uh, and the question says, everyone says they are going to do things while on city council, but what have you done or are you currently doing in your own personal time that helps Warman? And we'll begin with Tracy. Whew, good question. Okay, so I am a teacher. So I impact students' lives on a daily basis. I am the Warm and Minor Basketball Coordinator for the youth as a volunteer. So I volunteer my time. I can be seen in the Legend Center, actually coaching kids and doing individual sessions with team sports being um, on hold right now. I wanna keep the youth active. So I'm volunteering my time to help train kids in uh, basketball, which is my passion. Uh, and then I am actually speaking with uh, the youth across our division and empowering them through motivational talks and speeches about my story. Thank you, Tracy. Michelle, we'll turn things over to you. Good evening. Uh, for me, basically I'm a member of Warman Emergency Response Team. And then in the community, I can say that I'm at a point in my life why I'm running for city council is because I do have more time now and I'm hoping to get involved more in the future. That's, that's about all I can offer you at this point. Thank you, Michelle. Glenn Murray, go ahead when you're ready. Hi, so the question is what do I do outside of my work to help the community? I don't really have a lot of time outside of my work, but those who do know me see me at the pharmacy all the time at Legends. Uh, I work with all, just about everybody in town, and we spend a lot of time with sports teams. I sponsor all the sports teams, of course. I try to get out into the community as much. As far as benefit, I don't know, maybe I spend some money at the bars here now and again and the restaurants but I'm an advocate of the city and I have been for a long time I want to be on the inside this time I'm not sure if that answered your question but that is my answer thank you Glenn we'll move things over to Trevor when you are ready go ahead okay well my my way of giving back to the community was to, to run for and on council for the last eight years. And I look forward to another four years of doing that. Well, I've also, with, uh, with our business, me and my wife have sponsored the, the new AAA midget team uh, coming to Warman this, uh, this fall as well. Thanks, Trevor. Uh, group three, your question is... Uh, similar, but a little bit different. Uh, if you are an incumbent, what have you specifically done for the city? And if you are a newcomer, what are your top two goals? Uh, and we will go Doug Ramage, Marshall, Jarrett, and Kevin Tooley. Uh, Doug, go ahead when you're ready. Thank you. Um, my, my top two goals the city would be to increase the daytime population and the number of people spending time during the day within the city. This is really when it comes down to attracting restaurants and supporting our local businesses. We need to keep more money locally within the economy. We can do that by looking at opportunities to um, 
employment, either through uh, agribusiness or technology. And I would look at looking forward in terms of what these are for uh, recreation uh, into the future. Thanks, Doug. Marshall, go ahead. Perfect, thank you, Jamie. Um, really easy question for me. Uh, my top two goals, first and foremost, and the, the definite reason that I decided to run for city council is that I believe that the citizens of Warman uh, are paying for an exceptionally good amount of uh, police coverage with the RCMP, and to be blunt, we're not getting it. Um, uh, this is the reason I also started Neighborhood Watch. I've patrolled this community for literally hundreds of hours over the last five years. I spent countless evenings out between 10 and four o'clock, uh, and I think I've really been proactive in enabling uh, some things in our community. Um, first and foremost, that's my, my hot topic. Secondly, with uh, three young kids up and coming, uh, I want to see more opportunities for youth to be employed in the city. And that is a direct result of attracting new businesses that can, uh, in fact, employ the youth and benefit our economy at the same time. Thank you. Question. Thanks, Marshall. Uh, we have Jarrett next. Go ahead, Jarrett. My two quick hits, uh, they were touched on once before, um, bring an industry and business into our city, keeping our locals here employed, keeping our tax dollars spent here and keeping our youth employed. The youth spend a lot of money in Saskatoon and I really want to see some amenities here, whether they're short, fast, long, whatever it is, we have to start getting moving and getting our tax dollars in Warman. That's a priority one. Priority two is also gonna to touch on a little bit of tax dollars. It's an early pay property tax discount. Um, I feel if you're gonna get penalized for paying your taxes late, then why can you not get rewarded for paying them early? As we know, any little bit of money in this time in our pockets is an advantage for everybody, especially taxpayers. Thanks. Thanks, Jared. Uh, the next set of questions we have. Oh, sorry. I almost forgot Kevin. <laughs> Go ahead, That's okay, Kevin. Jamie. That's okay, Jamie. I'm pretty forgettable at times. Um, <laughs> I guess I get to answer this question as one of the only incumbents that's, uh, that's part of this group. But, um, you know, some of the things that I've, I'm extremely proud of my time on council is, is I've, I've been very active as a councillor and very engaged. And so when it comes to the decision making at the table, I've been a very active participant in that. But a couple of things come to mind that I've that I've been pretty key in over the years. And, and as a counselor, you're it's not always you're not always the primary focus. You're always part of it. And so you're part of the team. You're not necessarily the sole responsible one. But one is establishment of an aquatic reserve fund. So we've been talking about pools for a number of years. And that's something that we've done during my term on council. And I've been proud of that. The other one is in 2020, when COVID started, uh, one of the things we asked administration to do was go back and reopen the budget. And we actually came back with a tax decrease from what we had initially proposed. And if you go back and take a look at some of the minutes, I'm one of the key ones who actually brought that point forward. Thanks, Kevin. Okay, now we'll move on back to group one. Uh, this time, Tracy will lead the group, followed by Ivan, Glenn, and then Richard. The question is, what actions will you take to increase economic development in Warman? Well, the first thing I'd like to do is pay attention to our women entrepreneurs in Warman. We have so many stay-at-home moms that have small businesses operating. We have such a strong sector of women that are operating businesses in our community. I think they need to have a voice and I would like to uh, represent them and make sure that they can flourish and continue to really thrive in our community. Thank you. Thanks, Tracy. Ivan. You're, you're on mute, Ivan. Can you hear me now? Sure can, yeah. Great. 
I think uh, to encourage economic and development, one of the uh, things that we have to do is work very closely with uh, the Prairie Sky Chamber of Commerce, uh, who promote uh, our uh, our great city of Warman. Uh, I think uh, we also have to listen to our business people that are out there. Uh, we've got a lot of great businesses and we need to attract uh, some new businesses. Possibly maybe we have to look at uh, communities that have uh, uh, attracted industry or big box stores here and find out what they're doing, which makes uh, maybe we can take some of those ideas and apply them to uh, Warman to uh, have growth come here and have businesses start up here. Thank you. Thanks, Ivan. Uh, Glenn Gill. Hi, uh, very good question. This is where my inexperience in this area will show. Um, I believe the first, the biggest thing we need to do is have a open dialogue uh, with our current businesses that are in the city and try to attract complementary businesses that will support our current businesses that we have here in the industry. And that, I'm not sure if the Chamber of Commerce can, and SUMA and other government agencies in the province can also help with that communication and try to help us attract more opportunities in this great city. Thank you. Thanks, Glenn. Richard, when you're ready. Well, uh, th thank you very much for the question. Uh, first off, uh, with this year, we, we have a recent, uh, let's say, opening at, uh, where our uh, where our economic de development position is is currently unfilled. So, I think first priority, I would like to see that there, uh, you know, certainly looked at and uh, and you know, let's say, have the proper individual hired to turn around and head that position. I think that is very key. We need a champion, and um, and that is paramount to things moving forward. Second thing I'd like to bring forward is uh, with this year on my website, uh, with this year I have uh, some information about a pop-up shop. Now this is a program that I had seen and uh, you know seen this utilized out in in um, in Ontario, and I think it's something that we could try and bring here. I think that would be very uh, uh, very useful to try and trans you know to, uh, to try and set, uh, transition some of our local uh, home businesses out into a commercial setting. So I think that that would be something that I'd like to see forward. Also with this here, a business incubator Thanks. program. Thanks, Richard. You bet. Thanks. So that's uh, group one wrapped up. Uh, group two, we'll start with uh, Michelle, then Glenn Murray, Trevor, and then Tracy Johnson. What do you feel are the greatest opportunities or challenges for business growth and expansion in Warman. Michelle, go ahead when you're ready. Sure. So opportunity-wise, there's certainly we have a lot of vacant lots down in the south end. So to try and get the word out or attract businesses to work and build in that area would be great. And then uh, some of the, on the north end on Centennial, we've got our new strip mall Hopefully that gets leased out fairly quick. So that could be one of the areas we've got to get the name out and get people contacted so that the businesses can want to establish here. Um, for challenges, the biggest thing right now is with the COVID situation. And then like Richard said, with our economic development position vacant is getting, getting our name out there and contacting people to come to Warman and attract them to start their business here. Thank you, Michelle. Glenn Murray, go ahead. Hi, uh, I think the opportunities are huge. It's part of our strengths and weaknesses. We have a rapidly growing population, a young community, continues to grow. What we the strength is we have great parks, we have schools, and uh, the community is set up really well, infrastructure, how far we are from Saskatoon. Weakness, of course, 
is that we don't have enough in the commercial sector, which is going to fund anything we want to do. I won't make any promises about what we can do with a road or any. I just want to I want to make sure we have the money and we can fund things. This is a unique, very challenging period we're going into that nobody has seen before. COVID, jobs, all gone. So experience won't help. I'd like to go in this with a business mind, private business mind. We entice them as a competition. What we can offer them to come here. Sometimes Thanks, Glenn. I lost a little bit, but okay. I want to build a wall. Okay, we're going to move things on here. Trevor, Hi, Jamie. go ahead. Hi, Jamie. I, I think one of the greatest uh, advantages that Warmer has right now in economic development is the amount of business growth we've seen over the last year, year and a half. Um, businesses tend to invest in places where there's lots of business growth already. So it, it feeds on itself. Now, one of the challenges we have is getting, uh, getting past that uh, mindset that some people have in Saskatoon that Warman's a, a long way out from Saskatoon. We're not. And that's something I think we need to tackle with. Uh, and, that's, and that's done, uh, you know, through uh, advertising and through, you know, targeted campaigns. And I think that's uh, something that will really benefit our business community out here. Thank you, Trevor. Uh, Tracy Johnson. Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay, so um, as a provincial team coach, I brought in provincial teams to the Legends Centre and I wanted to promote our beautiful city and to get more exposure to what we have to offer. Um, the challenge was the cost to rent the facility, which resulted in a loss of the Basketball Saskatchewan wanting to rent the uh, facility from us. Uh, so as a result, they've gone to the map, which has offered some uh, better opportunities uh, to um, use the programming through Basketball Saskatchewan through um, camps. One of the opportunities that we have is um, the ability with the Legend Centre to add to it. I know we're adding another ice surface, but what about other diverse opportunities. We have a lot of soccer players. We have a lot of swimmers. We have a lot of different um, kids involved in the arts and dance. We've got cheerleading, but do they have a facility? So we have an opportunity to develop more opportunities for kids and all their needs. Thanks, Tracy. I just want to uh, remind our viewers that uh, if you do have any questions, uh, we are accepting questions via text at 306-292-7066, um, or you can enter them into the chat on YouTube. So just, just a friendly reminder out there. Uh, group three, we will start with Marshall, Jarrett, Kevin, and then Doug. The question is, the Prairie Sky Chamber conducted a survey to measure consumer leakage within our region. The survey indicated that 62% of residents in Warman and Martinsville region commute to another municipality for work, with 45% of those commuting, 45% of those commuting to Saskatoon. Attracting more businesses that will help increase local daytime employment opportunities is something the chamber has been advocating for. If elected to council, what would your approach to this be? Could you just repeat the question? No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I it was a long that, one. <laughs> that's fine. No, thank you. I'll, I'll tell you what I would do um, is that I believe in building teams. And when you have a team, you need to rely on the strengths and weaknesses of your team. Um, when we have somebody like the Prairie Sky Chamber, who does an excellent job of engaging local business owners and also has a network to communicate with other chambers across Saskatchewan. Quite frankly, you know what this community needs. So what would I do? I would rely on the experts that are already in place that can give us relevant information so that we can make the best decision for our city. Two parts to that, listening to the chamber and also listening to people that have tried to open up businesses here or have opened up businesses in other communities that have been both successful and or have failed because quite frankly, those are the people that we need to learn from. That's who I wanna to listen to, and I wanna implement the strategies that they already know will work. 
Thanks, Marshall. Jarrett. This is a great question because again, I really, really, really want to see more in industry. I want to see more business brought back here. I want to see more employment for our youth, but I also want to see the balance of not affecting our small business owners. They're very important and vital to the city. So what I want to see is we're going to have to go a little bit old school. Right now during the COVID, not a lot of expansion is going to be going on. But with my 30 years in supply chain capabilities and capacities of some sort, I've got the connections and I know the people that are looking to expand and the services that we're needing in Warman. So I'm going to lean on a little bit of experience my way, and I'm also going to lean on my teammates to know from the experience that they've ran into to bring the industry and bring the business here and make us more successful and warm and because we need our money to stay locally. Thank you. Thanks, Jared. Kevin Dooley. I think with that particular question, and one of the first things we have to keep in mind is, is, is actually our proximity to the city of Saskatoon. And one of the things I think we have to recognize is that a lot of people that come to the table with different professional backgrounds uh, are going to have to travel for some of those experiences. But then we come back to Warman where we, where we live, where we play, uh, where, we, where we can spend money as well. But one of the first things that, that I believe is, is really important, and I think this is something that's, that's being achieved very well, is one of the first layers that has to be done when it comes to economic development in a community is that professional service level. And that's things like the pharmacies, the accountants, lawyers, doctors, having those services. And then a lot of other business spins off of that. And I think that's really a key that, that we've been focusing on need to continue focusing on. Thanks, Kevin. Doug, go ahead when you're ready. Thanks, Jamie. Uh, I was a part of the study, and uh, one of the things that we found was also that the majority of people made purchasing decisions close to where they work. With this in mind, I think it's really important to look at diversifying that employment base and look at technology, agribusiness sectors. I think one of the ways we can do this is continue to work with the Chamber of Commerce and, re and reach out to get the checklist of what some of these industries are looking for. We have everything that employment sectors are looking for. We have, the, we have the employment base, we have parks, we have recreation, we have amenities, we have the professional services, we need to fill some of these gaps. And I think that starts with reaching out and determining where the gaps are and working together as a team. Thank you, Doug. Back to group one. Uh, and leading this uh, group, we'll start off with Ivan, Glenn, Richard, and then Tracy. And the question is, there has been lots of discussion around an indoor pool for the city of Warman. What is your stance on this topic? Ivan, go ahead. Can you unmute yourself there? You may have froze. There you yes, go. Jamie. I only, I only got a fraction. Of, I only got a fraction of the question. Yeah, uh, I can sorry. repeat it. Could you um, please, please? Absolutely. The question was: There has been lots of discussion around an indoor pool for the city of Warman. What is your stance on this topic? Okay. Thank you very much for the question. Uh, um, opinion for or against the swimming pool in Warman. I've said that we need to explore the possibility of a pool for all residents, young and old, to use. This could occur in the future if any federal or provincial grants were available or through corporate sponsorship. An interested, an interested group that would like to have a pool built need to be organized that would do fundraisers and gather donations similar to when the Legend Center was built. I was part of that volunteer group that raised monies for the Legend Center. And being the city manager at that time, I had to arrange and find funding for the construction of the Legend Center. I would only support the construction of a swimming pool if there was adequate funding in place. Thanks, 
Thank you, Ivan. Uh, Glenn Garrow. Well, for me, um, I know I've heard uh, the community talk that they are very much in favor of a community pool as I know a number of families, as my wife did run a daycare when we first moved here in this, in Warman 17 years ago, and they did take advantage of the pool in Martinsville. So we've been talking about trying to keep tax dollars or spending money here in the city. I believe that a pool would help attract some of that and retain some of that funding. But I do agree with Ivan that the money needs to be available and and we need to be financially uh, needs to be financially sustainable, and also not um, be a tax burden for our community. Thank you. Thanks, Glenn. Richard, go ahead. Excellent. Thank you. So, two guiding principles that I have on this one. First one is fiscal responsibility. The second one is my commitment to asset management. So, in order for for the project to go forward, I need both of those satisfied. So with that being said, I would start the pool right now. If you find me the right partner that, that the city can team up with, because with this year, pools have demonstrated across Saskatchewan that these are money losing, um, you know, let's say entities and whatnot. And it's, it's, it's the operating losses that create a lot of, um, let's say management issues in terms of how do you continually, um, let's say, put something in place to prevent that cap, that, uh, let's say, like the losses um, showing up on your taxes in, like in, in, in the next year. So find me the right partner for this year, the capital aspect of it and whatever, we can, we can recapture that over 30 years, you know, for, uh, for the life of the building. So that there would be fine, but we need a partner to shoulder the losses and uh, with this year, there's, there's creative ways to do that, but it does take a partner in order to, uh, to do that. Thank you, Richard. Tracy. Hi, yes, I um, feel strongly that we need funding. We need adequate funding before we can pursue the actual inception of a swimming pool, indoor swimming pool. Um, I do believe it would be a great asset if the funding was put into place and uh, it would be a selling feature for the city of Warman. But I also do believe there are other facilities in Warman that need some attention and other programs in regards to sports, arts, culture that really do need some extra attention. I see an indoor swimming pool as a little bit of a long-term goal but we have other things that we could possibly set into motion a little bit sooner. Thanks, Tracy. Okay, group two. Uh, and leading or starting off this group would be Glenn Murray, followed by Trevor Peterson, Tracy Johnson, and Michelle uh, Mallow. What is your view of the current infrastructure and maintenance status? And what would you do, if anything, to improve it? Go ahead, Glenn. I think the I think the current state is of our infrastructure. <clears throat> it's in really good shape. It's been well taken care of for a long time. We would have to make sure that we can. <laughs> some, we. <laughs> we we have to make sure that we continue to take care of it and keep putting money towards it. What I'd like to see done in the future is obviously grow and have a need to expand it. That's fine. I, that's... Thanks, Glenn. Uh, Trevor Peterson. Hi, Jamie. Uh, one of the first things in, in the budgeting process that I always look for, and, and I think we touch on pretty early in the, in the past uh, on my time on council, is, is, the, is the maintenance part of our infrastructure. You know, we've, we've taken really good care every year of our roadways and our sidewalks, and we look for things that need to be repaired first and foremost before we undertake any new projects. And I think moving forward, that's where my, fo my focus would, would be on those things. 
a uh, couple projects that uh, we need to do to, to improve the, uh, our infrastructure uh, are with a couple of our, uh, um, our lift stations. We need to upgrade them to handle the, the expanded population that, that has occurred in Warman. Thank you. Thanks, Trevor. Uh, Tracy Johnson. When you are ready, go ahead. Uh, yeah, thanks, sorry. Um, I agree with Trevor about the maintenance of some of the infrastructure. Um, I know just take, capitalizing on the walkways, the beautiful walkways we have around the ponds and the water, we have to ensure that the snow removal is done on time and that the whole walk path is accessible. Uh, there's some drainage that happens that causes slips and falls um, when we're getting into the freezing uh, temperatures. Roadways seem to be okay. They're taken care of most of the time. Um, but then again, maintenance and the timing of construction is uh, one of the issues that I have. That's all I have. Thanks, Tracy. Uh, Michelle, can you wrap up group two for us here? Sure. Uh, for, yeah, for our infrastructure, again, I'd have to agree, a lot of it is really well taken care of. Uh, we're very fortunate for our roadways here. Like, we can easily boast that, hey, my street got cleaned two days ago after a snowfall. How's yours? And I talked to some of my people and they're like, you know, they're still driving through ruts. So we're lucky that way. In a, for the parks, the only thing maybe just if we could add some trees and then somebody else mentioned the diamond arena, just maybe could use a bit of a facelift. Other than that, I think uh, we're doing really well. And that's about it. Thanks, Michelle. Okay, moving on to group three, um, starting in this group, we'll have Jarrett, Kevin, Doug, and then Marshall. The question is, there are empty retail locations sitting along Central Street uh, year after year, while more retail space continues to be put up in the North End, leaving ve very little for South End residents. How would you address bringing back business to Central Street? And go ahead, Jared. Addressing that need, Obviously, we're going to see the expansion of where it is now, but addressing Central, we're going to have to give some incentives and to revitalize maybe um, that as a heritage district, maybe bring in some things that will bring in warm in history and designate that maybe as our heritage district, bring in some nice shops, bring in some local flair, as you call it, from warm and back in the days. Um, make it, you know, give it an incentive. Um, there's lots of history here and there's lots of people that know a lot about Warman and a lot about the history and maybe that's what we need on that street is to revitalize it maybe designate that as our heritage part of town and have that go directly with our new the new and the old merging nicely thanks thanks Jared Kevin thanks Jamie I actually find this to be a little bit of an interesting question, and, and it's one that I've I've actually been a little critical of in my time on council, is that we are we are a little bit disjointed with how we have our commercial development going. We've got almost three different areas that we're focused on. Um, one thing I've actually have been quite encouraged by is is a lot of the recent development along Central Street. There's a lot of businesses that are that are actually choosing to locate there, and you know are, are sort of making that their locations, and it's it's almost I'd like to see it turn into almost more of a downtown feel at some point, which we currently don't have. You know, I think of a lot of small towns or a lot of cities and they've got a vibrant downtown area, which, which we really don't have at this point. Uh, the other point I'd like to make is that realistically though, with, with some of those vacant spaces that we do have, lots of room for opportunity. And I think that's something that, uh, you know, the, the inventory is there. It's just, we need businesses attracted to get into them. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Doug. Uh, thanks very much for the question. I think Central Street holds some of the the most potential within within the city of Warman. Uh, I, I see this as a place for business incubation. 
co-working spaces, opportunities to start to transition um, home-based businesses into more of a storefront. And I think that this can really be uh, the nexus and, and where the growth for this can come from. You have City Hall, you have banking, you, you have Great Plains College, you have all the fundamentals of a, of a really strong small town um, Main Street quarter. And I, and I think this is the opportunity to get into the business incubators and the co working spaces. Thank you. Thanks, Doug. Uh, and Marshall. All right, thank you, Jamie. Um, I think that this is something that we have to work closely with, uh, as uh, Richard had mentioned before, uh, the incoming um, economic development. Uh, personnel that's going to go out and, and talk to businesses and explain to them why we have uh, diversity of opportunities within Warman. Um, everybody wants a new building. Everybody wants the fresh area. They see a lot of stuff popping up. And, and I mean, it's natural for them to want to look there. Um, but I think that by providing them with the opportunity to understand that there's also a population that is underserved, which is the self uh, side of warm and um, showing them that there is a desire there for residents to have amenities that are close to them and then working with them to understand some of the landowners, the incentives that can be provided with them and really the opportunities that do lay on central because it's a highly traveled street. Uh, I think that a lot of times people just drive through warm and take a look, kind of get their own snapshot and go, I want to go where it's new uh, without realizing the opportunities that are in front of them uh, in the existing uh, parts of central street. And, and quite frankly, uh, that's something that, uh, council and also uh, the development manager needs to participate in it. Thank you. Thanks, Marshall. Okay, this is going to be our last round of questions. Um, so we'll, we'll probably go a little past eight o'clock if that's okay once we do uh, closing remarks. Uh, so for group one, uh, first up in this group will be Glenn, then Richard, Tracy, and then Ivan. Um, and I think Ivan may be having some technical difficulties, uh, but uh, hopefully he can get those figured out. Um, the question is, please elaborate, elaborate on our protective services. Why do you think they are acceptable or why do you think they need work? Uh, Glenn, go ahead when you're ready. Oh boy, um, I believe we are not served at the appropriate level that I believe a city of our size is. Um, I believe the RCMP are stretched fairly thin. They are trying to cover too large of an area while, and because of that, and they're being called out, leaves our community unsupported uh, for periods of time. Um, I'm one of the lucky few, if you want to call it that, that I do have an RCMP officer that lives on our Crescent. And quite often when he's on call, he's the only vehicle, RCMP vehicle I see driving in and through the city. So I believe that uh, we need to have some conversations to see how we can uh, help our protective services to be able to uh, support our community and protect us. Thank you. Thanks, Glenn. Richard. Yes, uh, so under protective services with this year, there's uh, like there's four pillars for me. The first one there being being the EMO. So this is our emergency uh, management office. But this year we've we've just hired a um, a regional you know director that will work you know, for our community and also have the surrounding communities where where the where, the, uh, where emergency plans are going to be coordinated from. So. So certainly implementation on, on exactly how that position there uh, is going to be rolled out is going to be very important for me. Also this year on the RCMP side, uh, well, actually, uh, let me go to the fire, uh, to the fire hall first. So this year, our volunteer fire department is second to none across the province. Russ Austin and, and his entire crew over there are they we meet all of our service times for fire calls and for uh you know for medical emergencies and whatnot and we can take pride in everything it is that they do and everything that they, they that they deliver certainly on the rcmp side with this year we have had some service concerns uh, and certainly in terms of how our rcmp work and i see my time is up i will have all more right. to say thanks thanks richard uh tracy buquin Hello, yes, I do feel that um, 
I feel very safe in our community. I think we're very fortunate. We have a great support in our fire and our RCMP. Do I think that we need to grow the police services? Yes, we do. Because as our city grows, uh, I do believe we will need more support. I also would like to see, especially the RCMP, have more presence in our community, whether they become more engaged. My art center is right across the street from the RCMP. And I just don't feel their presence in a community way as much as I feel that they, they should represent themselves. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. And Ivan, did you just, just unmute yourself there, Ivan? I, I actually lost the connection. Uh, yeah. So I did not get the question. Now I'm on my iPhone. So can you just repeat the question for me, please? I sure can, yes. Uh, it's, the question is, please elaborate on our protective services. Why do you think they are acceptable or why do you think they need work? Well, I think we're very fortunate in, in Warman to have a, a detachment here of the RCMP. Uh, a lot of people don't really realize that we do have a rural component in our detachment also. So we have urban and rural out of that uh, one detachment. And Definitely, if it, it does need tweaking, we can always talk to the local staff sergeant and work with him to make sure that we, he can improve the services. Uh, our fire department, I've always said, is second to none. It, it is probably the best in the country that I've ever seen and, and worked with. Uh, I worked with him in the, in the eight and a half years that I was here uh, as the city manager, and the, our fire department works great. Uh, uh, they have great equipment and, uh, and will continue doing a, a great job. They, they cover a lot of territory for what they've got. Thank you. Thanks, Ivan. Okay, last question for group two. Uh, the question is, many studies indicate that it is difficult for individual municipalities to navigate an increasingly complex world on their own when it comes to economic development. As a result, many municipalities are banding together on economic development rather than competing against one another. What is your position on working with neighboring municipalities to attract business to our region? And what opportunities would you suggest pursuing? And starting this group is Tracy Johnson, followed by Michelle, then Glenn Murray, and Trevor Peterson. So go ahead, Tracy. Okay, I missed some of the questions. Yeah, I missed some of the questions. So what are some opportunities for economic development uh, with community, other communities? Yeah, what is your position on working with neighboring municipalities to attract business to our region and what opportunities would you suggest pursuing? Ooh okay, um, I am all for um, competition, uh, but I do think it's actually of value to be able to work with neighboring communities uh, when uh, the situation arises where it would meet success, would meet the needs of both of the communities involved, um, share and split costs, bring money back into both communities and uh, be of equal partnership. As for <clears throat> ways, I guess maybe, um, I, don't, I don't even know. I don't even know. I'm going to leave it up to the rest of my team, who's probably uh, has a strength in this, but I don't know where we would, where the opportunities would lie, honestly. Okay, that's okay. Thanks, Tracy. Uh, Michelle. For this one, the only one that, the only thing that comes to mind is somebody that uh, mentioned it to me just as a suggestion for the pool rather than warm and sh shouldering all of the burden of it, maybe cost sharing it between here, Martinsville, Dalmany, Osler. I realize they're further away, but there would be benefits for the pool. Like obviously local communities, I'll say in winter, they're gonna come here. So there would be a benefit for that. So it's about all I can think of offhand. 
for a sharing opportunity. Thank you, Michelle. Glenn Murray. Hi, uh, I think partnering with neighboring communities is an excellent idea. Any community, as a matter of fact. But in our case, the obvious one seems to be Martinsville. And we don't want to limit it to partnering just with Martinsville on a couple of really big projects. Ultimately, we'd like to partner with the province and the feds to get bigger projects in here. And when I'm talking bigger, I think we need a police station, a real police station where 25,000 people with the population of Martinsville and Warman. I think we only have four, five dedicated uh, urban police. Is that correct? Maybe four or five for that area and a hospital. We need a hospital out here combined Warman Martinsville Corning Park where 45,000 people technically the third largest community in Saskatchewan. We're the only one without a hospital that's for sure. So Thanks, ben. Maybe that's a minute now. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Trevor, go ahead. In, uh, in my time on council, we've worked very closely with our neighboring communities with P4G and as members of Sarita and on other uh, projects like even uh, dealing with uh, the uh, police force with the uh, RCMP. We uh, meet with uh, Martinsville and the RCMP on that. So um, for economic development, it's, you know, moving together as uh, groups, as a powerful group uh, of a trading area, like uh, including Osler and Martinsville and that, to attract time of addition amongst uh, communities is done. Uh, to move forward, you have to be, well, be willing to work together. Thanks, Trevor. Okay, and the last question uh, of the evening goes to group three. Uh, leading this off is Doug Ramage, followed by Marshall, Jarrett, and then Kevin. And the question is, what strategies will you, the candidates, take to keep Warman's population growing? That's a really good question. And I think it gets back to a lot of the discussion that we've had um, this evening here. It's the right investment at the right time at the right cost. It's looking at creative solutions. It's looking at perhaps the pool is more of a combined rector such as the YMCA within the city of Brandon that has a daycare center, has a gym, has more recreational opportunities and a swimming pool. It's partnering with the other municipalities so that this is the right cost and the right investment at the right time. And I think it, the other big one is increasing employment base. We need to keep more people working, working locally uh, so that there's spinoffs uh, to support local business. Thanks, Doug. Thank you. Marshall. Thank you, Jamie. Um, one thing that uh, I think we need to continue doing, uh, and I've seen this sitting on the Parks and Rec Advisory Council for the last number of years, is that uh, we have developed a tremendous uh, park system, recreational facilities, and just really we've attracted people from outside of our own communities that come here for events, see what we have, and realize that, quite frankly, I, I think we have the best facilities in Saskatchewan. Um, not only indoor, but also outdoor facilities. We've attracted major baseball tournaments. Uh, we've got now camping uh, within our own city. And of course, the Legend Center is something that we're all proud of. Uh, I think we need to highlight these things because those are the bases of what make uh, people like myself proud to live in Warman. And I think by highlighting those and letting people know that we have those, and those are already done. And think about all the other great things that we're going to start working on, uh, showing business uh, development and also having more opportunity for our youth to continue to work is just going to show that we have all the reasons in the world to move to Warman. And uh, quite frankly, uh, I think that once people see that, they'll wonder why they haven't done it sooner. Thank you, Marshall. Uh, Jared. I like this question. It's touched on a few times here tonight. Um, Aggressive economic growth for Warman. We need local jobs, 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 and industry and business brought here. 
again, without harming our small business owners that are vital to this community. Um, again, our youth spend a lot of money outside the city. And myself, when I moved here in 2015, I saw Warman as a vibrant, beautiful community. Like it was pretty much, this is the place where we wanted to be when we drove through it. End of story. Now, 45% of the people are driving into the city and outlying areas going to work, myself included. I would like to not do that. I would really like to have industry here. I would really like to see everybody having their lunch in town. I would really like to see something with two, 300 jobs would be great. Bringing in amenities. You'd see the pools. You'd see the bowling lanes. You'd see the services. It's a spin-off effect. And that's what I would like to see. Thanks. Thanks, Jarrett. And to wrap things up, uh, we have Kevin. Thanks, Jamie. And actually, I was kind of itching to answer the last question. So this, this actually allows me to answer the last question and this one together. And I think what we need to look at is, is realistically, when it comes to Warman in the region, we have to look at, at the region overall and, and how Warman fits into that puzzle. And success in the region, just it, it's success for Warman. And we look at things like the partnerships that are out there. I mean, the Prairie Sky Chamber of Commerce is a partnership of, of multiple communities. Uh, Saskatchewan, or Saskatchewan Region, sorry, um, Saskatchewan Region Economic Development Authority. And so when we have those, you know, that resource, things like processing and manufacturing, and those are things that are going to be drawn to the region. And then we look at the industries that are important in Saskatchewan, such as the food, fuel, and fertilizer industries. And some of those things are, if we can get those in the region, warm benefits from that just as much as everybody else does. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, thank you guys all for uh, taking these questions on. I know it's not easy, but you all uh, really did, did a great job. Uh, so you can all breathe a sigh of relief now because we're moving on to our closing remarks. Uh, and as stated earlier, we are going to start in reverse alphabetical order. Uh, so we'll turn things over to uh, Kevin once again. I just talked. Um, <laughs> I'd like to take the opportunity to conclude by, by thanking the Prairie Sky Chamber of Commerce once again for hosting this evening. I also want to take a moment to publicly thank our current council members that are not seeking re-election, which is Brian Jones, Kendall Schramm, and of course our Worship Mayor Cheryl Spence. We are seeing many years of dedicated leadership stepping away from the council table, and it's been my pleasure learning from and working with each of them. With that said, I believe now is a critical time for the future of Warman with Councillor Gary Philipchuk acclaimed, acclaimed as the next Mayor of Warman. I believe there is also a need for a level of consistency around the Council table. I firmly believe that I bring that consistency to the dedicated leadership and commitment I've shown to the growth and prosperity of Warman over the past eight years. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. I also want to thank the candidates for being here this evening and putting yourself out there. Anyone interested, I invite you to contact me with any questions or concerns that you have. And everybody is welcome to follow me on Facebook at reelect Kevin Tooley for Warman City Council. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Jarrett. As a father and a taxpayer, I can see what is near and dear as a family for the next four years in Warman. We need industry. We need big business. We need our locals to be employed in Warman, spending in Warman, and we need to maintain that balance with our small business owners. People are tired of hearing why we can't get things here. Why we gotta wait, 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 wait. As a council, we need to be aggressive and bring that business here. We need to employ our youth. We need theaters, we need shopping, we need attractions. Our youth spend a load of cash, let's keep it here. Think outside the box. I mentioned that before, you're gonna hear it lots. As a group, quit making excuses that we don't have the population or taxes will go up or what ifs. We have the foundation, let's get the industry rolling. Think outside the box, third party investors, government funding, People don't wanna wait five to eight years for services. Our seniors need affordable housing here as well to balance the young and old and warming. Mayor Philip Chuck is gonna need a strong team of six for these next four years. While it may be a difficult time for the economy, there are avenues to pursue and as a group, he needs creative thinking, a go-to attitude and a team that can get the job done. On November 9th, I wanna be on this team to help warm and push hard to be a leader Thanks, and not a follower. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. Uh, Marshall. 
Perfect. Thanks, Jamie. Um, yeah, first and foremost, I want to thank uh, both the Prairie Sky Chamber of Commerce for hosting this event, as well as uh, I, I really want to say thank you to all the other candidates, because I think together we're bringing out a lot of issues that are near and dear to the city of Warm, and, and uh, it's awesome to see that there's so many people that want to take part in it. Um, for me, quite simply, um, it's what I've been talking about since uh, I've decided to run for council, and that's uh, protective services, specifically RCMP, top of my list. Uh, we just simply need to do better, and I know that we can. Uh, as well. Uh, I, I'm not somebody to sit around and talk about that something needs to be done. I'm somebody to say that this is what I'm doing. This is why I'm a member of the Emergency Operations Center. This is why I started uh, Neighborhood Watch. And this is also why I'm involved in about five to six other different community groups. We need somebody that's going to lead by their actions, uh, not just talk about what needs to be done. Uh, I would like to think that I'm the person that can assist with that. And I look forward to doing that as a member of a team, certainly not as an individual. So please look me up on Facebook. Uh, I've got to elect Marshall Seed. And of course, uh, my number is also on the city profile for candidates. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Doug. Thanks, Jamie, and thanks to the Chamber of Commerce, and also thanks to everyone that uh, was par participating uh, this evening. Uh, for me, it comes back to that growth, growth and affordability, community safety, and supporting work, uh, supporting working here, growing here, and the local businesses. I think that we are in times that there's a lot of uncertainty, and certainly there needs to be. Uh, responsible fiscal management of that. But we also need to remember that we're building a community that our youth are going to hopefully live in and raise a family in as well. So we need to look at these services and we need to look at what we, how we can add to the positive growth of this community, with the right investment at the right time at the right cost. Uh, thanks very much. People can reach out to me on my Facebook page at elect Douglas Ramage, City of Warman, and my other contact information is available on my city profile. Thank you. Thanks, Doug. Uh, Trevor. First of all, I'd like to thank the Prairie Sky uh, Chamber of Commerce for putting this event on. I'd like to thank all my other candidates for being here. And I'd like to thank uh, everyone who participated uh, to get themselves informed by watching on uh, YouTube and Facebook. Um, I, I believe that we've done well in the last eight years in Warmer. We've uh, concentrated on looking after your tax dollars, making sure they're well spent, planning ahead, and making sure that uh, we have a path forward. And I believe that uh, on November 9th, if you reelect me to, to uh, council, we'll keep moving on that path forward. You can find me on Facebook, reelect Trevor Peterson, Peterson to Warman City Council. You can phone me, 306 291 -0412. And if you want to chat anytime, I'm more than happy, not just in election time, but after the election as well. Thank you. Thanks, Trevor. Uh, Glenn Murray. Hi, I'm not really one for speeches. I don't prepare anything. So first I'd like to thank everybody in Mormon, the 80 people who are watching, the, 13,000 people are here without all the people in Mormon. Personally, I wouldn't be in Mormon. I'd like to thank all the competition out here. Uh, I think it's really important to know that everybody knows we need something or want something, but in the end, it comes down to how do you do that? Well, you need money. And that means expanding our commercial sector, which means competing with other cities. That's that's it, that's all. They offer incentives, we need to beat those. There's been opportunities, some lost. I think there's a lot more to come, but if you wanna keep taxes down and you wanna pay for the things you need, let alone the things you want, you need a very strong commercial sector. So going forward, that would be one of my biggest focuses is meeting with other groups, bigger groups, federal government, provincial government, bringing together seniors, families. Thanks, Glenn. Indigenous people to build it together. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Michelle. Good evening. Uh, yes, again, my thanks for everybody who joined us, all the people who are stepping up to be part of the council, the future members. Good luck to you all. Uh, so for me, basically, again, if you look at my uh, Facebook page and my profile, 
I'm basically there for to grow the economic side of things. Okay, if we get our businesses here, we will have more money, creates more employment look for adults as long as and kids. And like other people have said, then there's money to be spent here. And if that happens, we can build on to our infrastructure, have the places where we can play and live local and hopefully just stay here. Okay, just look up my candidate profile. Elect Michelle Malo for Warman City Council. Thanks. Thanks, Michelle. Tracy Johnson. Hi, thank you for uh, hosting this. Um, as you know, COVID has brought out some dark issues and dark times for all of us, but now it's our time to shine. And with that, we need to encourage and embrace diversity and it's time for change. And that change means more women on council, more women in leadership positions, and to make sure that we do it together. So let's take action and make changes together. Let's get the right people on the bus. Let's keep diversity and equitable representation alive. And I'll be your agent of change. Take a chance on me. Have a good night. Thanks, Tracy. Uh, Glenn. Um, I want to thank everyone for their consideration and to all the candidates that are running uh, with me. Uh, and best of luck to all of us. And to the Prairie Sky Chamber of Commerce for hosting this forum. Um, I look forward to the election results with the hope of being able to represent everyone in our great community. Um, I can be reached uh, via my um, pro candidate profile. My contact information is there. Facebook page is coming slowly. I want to be a voice for change. I want to help improve communications from council to the community as well. Thank you very much and everyone have a good evening. Thanks, Glenn. Ivan. Just, yeah, unmute yourself there, Ivan. Thanks. I'd like to thank Jamie and the members of Prairie Sky Chamber of Commerce for hosting the All Candidates Forum tonight. Thank you to all the candidates that per participated also. The residents of the City of Warman expect a high level of municipal services and amenities. This can be achieved through councils being fiscally responsible and transparent. When I was the City Manager, I encouraged an open door policy in my office to deal with concerns and issues from the residents of Warman. I will continue this policy when elected and listen to residents and be their voice at the council table. On November 9th, I ask for your support. I can be reached on Facebook or text to call me at 306-380-3636. Thank you. Thanks, Ivan. Uh, Tracy Buechler. Hello, first of all, I'd like to thank the previous council and Mayor Cheryl Spence. They have done a great job. Our city is a wonderful place to live and grow. Now we need to move into the future. We need women on the council. We need some diversity. We need a strong voice for the people that are here already. I love the fact, the thought of bringing industry and business into Warman to grow our tax base, but I also want to nurture what's here. I see a future for Warman that includes tourism, through the arts, the performing arts. I see it through bringing in people in the sports field. It's the sky's the limit. Thank you very much. And if you'd like to get a hold of me, reach out to Facebook at Tracy.Buchler on Facebook. Thank you. Thanks, Tracy. Uh, last but not least, Richard, go ahead. Well, thank you, Jamie, and thank you, Prairie Sky Chamber of Commerce, for this opportunity to connect with entrepreneurs and residents, for allowing me to, to you know, to demonstrate how how I can continue to serve the City of Warman. Thank you to the audience for taking the time to get to know your candidates. Since re-election in 2016, I've delivered on fostering local and regional partnerships with the establishment of the Warman Physician and Recruitment Retention Committee, and also with the successful adoption of the Planning for Growth Regional Agreement. 
From 2020 to 2021, uh, to, from 2020 to 2024, I'm, commi I'm committed to the implementation of our facility review to address capacity restrictions and position our community for continued growth opportunities and to provide support for the economic development initiatives and to continue to foster partnerships to fill service gaps while, re while reducing the economic burden of our taxation needs. My focus includes asset management, fiduciary responsibility, capacity building, safety, and to provide relevant services to support lifelong residents here. Thank you, Richard. I think I'm short 25 seconds, but that's okay. <clears throat> Thanks. Um, well, that is it for this evening. I want to thank our candidates for allowing everyone to get to know you a little bit better and sharing your platforms on this forum. I wanna thank our viewers for watching uh, and, and submitting all the questions. We have quite a few and as promised, we will forward those on to the candidates to uh, address if they choose. I, I know all of the candidates here tonight wanna to hear from you. So I, I encourage you to reach out to them, but I also encourage you to exercise your right to vote on November 9th. With that being said, thank you again for everyone for joining us. Uh, take care and stay safe. Thanks everyone.